In today's video, I'll be taking you on a high speed train in a place you probably least expect to find one, Africa. Morocco's Al Borak high speed service is the first of its kind on the African continent, capable of reaching 320 km per hour as the train crosses Morocco from its northernmost city Tangier to its largest one, Casablanca. Join me as we take a look inside this service and take a ride on Africa's fastest train. Now sit back and enjoy the ride. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Tangier V, the station serving Morocco's northernmost city and where the Al Borak begins its journey. Despite the modern appearance, the station here actually dates back to 2003, but was heavily refurbished for the introduction of the Al Borak high speed service back in 2018, with the original station building incorporated well into the brand new design. The inside of the station features a classic design which you can find throughout Morocco's major railway stations, and I have to say it looks fantastic. The shop choices are also very diverse, with both non-essential and essential ones throughout. You can otherwise spend time by looking around the beautiful garden situated in the old station building, which makes Tangierville all the more pleasant to walk around. Now there is a food court here as well, but as Morocco is a Muslim country and it was the holy month of Ramadan when I travelled, the only food outlet open was this McDonald's here. Normally there's loads of choice and provides a good vantage point to view the passenger traffic in this station, which has been brought to life by the Al Borak's introduction. All services here, including the Al Borak, are operated by Morocco's national carrier ONCF, or Office National de Chimon de Fer as shown by both the ticket machines and the large sign celebrating five years of the Al Borak service which adorns the ticket office. Speaking of which, I'm travelling on a first class ticket for this trip, which grants me access to the Al Borak lounge located just by the platforms. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I really enjoyed the lounge here. The design choices are brilliant and it's definitely a great way to avoid the massive crowds of people in the main area waiting for our train. Now again, the month of Ramadan meant that at the time of filming it wasn't possible to use the catering facilities in the lounge, but I was fasting myself so I personally had no issues. The fridge is normally well stocked and you can make yourself a cup of coffee if you fancy. The Al Borak service departs on the hour every hour from both Casablanca and Tangier except for 1pm and up to 9pm. Our train is the 1600 to Casa Voyageur departing from platform 7. And speaking of which, here's our train patiently waiting for us under a surprisingly grey sky, but we'll have more time to talk about it shortly, as 20 minutes before departure we're called to board, with first class passengers boarding separately from the lounge to those in second class. This really highlights how popular the Al Borak is, having transported over 5 million passengers in 2023. Now this train may look a bit familiar to you, right? Yep, the Al Borak is derived directly from the French TGV, being part of the Alstom Avelio Euro duplex family. I say derived as the train is named RGV, so as not to interfere with the main TGV brand and features some modifications to cope with the more extreme conditions in Morocco than you would find in mainland Europe. ONCF has a fleet of 12 built for the Al Borak service between 2014 and 2016, which was named after the Burak, a creature in Islamic tradition that transported prophets over long distances within moments, so the name is rather fitting. This train is Africa's first high speed train and currently the fastest train on the African continent, reaching regular service speeds of 320 km per hour and even set an African speed record of 357 km per hour during initial testing in May 2018, which is very impressive. I have to say as well, the livery on these trains really suits the TGV duplex design, but what do you think of it? Let me know below. As you would expect, the Al Borak makes much less stops than the Al Atlas intercity trains and reaches double their speed. However, we'll have more time to dwell on that later. For now, let's board. 
Being a Euro duplex, the Alborak is a double decker train, and if you can, I'd advise sitting on the top deck. Not only are the views better, but strangely enough, it was nowhere near as busy as the bottom deck. Not sure as to whether this is a preference or just poor seat allocations. The layout of first class is almost exactly the same as the French TGV. A 2x1 seating arrangement with a nice mix of solo and duo seats. However, we'll have plenty of time to check this out in further detail shortly. Being ONCF's premium high speed service, we immediately pick up the high speed line to Kenitra before rejoining the conventional lines to Rabat and finally Casa Voyageur where we were expected to arrive at 10 past 6 Moroccan time, taking just over 2 hours to cover the 348km distance. Not bad! We depart Tangier, bang on time, at 4pm Moroccan time. Mesdames et messieurs, El Bourak, vous souhaite la bienvenue à bord du train grande vitesse numéro 2041. Shortly after leaving, we passed the Tangier M. Gogar maintenance facility, where ONCF, with support from Alstom and France's SNCF, maintains the Alborak fleet. Quite a few sets are on standby, either receiving maintenance or for use in service later. The facility has capacity for 30 train sets, which ONCF intends to utilise, following a tender issue for 18 extra trains to support the Alborak's expansion elsewhere in the country, with the line to Marrakesh expected to be open by November 2029. That being said, we prepare to exit the conventional lines which continue below and join the Tangier to Kenita high speed line almost immediately after leaving Tangier, which is the first and currently only one in Africa. This will soon be joined in 2027 by the first phase of a brand new high speed railway in Egypt, which is receiving the support of Germany's Siemens and Deutsche Bahn, much like Alstom and SNCF have done for the Al Borak. I certainly can't wait to try it once it's ready. The weather may be overcast, but that won't stop us from enjoying the stunning Moroccan landscape on the high speed line, easily reaching the Al Borak's top service speed of 320 km per hour. This has allowed journeys between Tangier and Casablanca to be reduced significantly from almost 5 hours to just over 2 hours, owing to the Al Borak achieving double the speed that is done by classic Al Atlas trains. Now's a good time to check out the train's features. Fortunately, Alstom have kept the first class seat as plush and spacious as the French TGV. This is more than acceptable for a journey of over 2 hours, and I have to say, the maquette design used is brilliant. Each seat contains foldable armrests on both sides, with the right one also responsible for managing the electronic recline function, as indicated by the two arrows. This is a huge help with adjusting the already generous legroom present, though the one downside is the footrest, which if you're on the shorter side, you may prefer. Like the French TGV, the large tray table is perfect for a laptop if you want to get some work done or kick back and relax. There is also a small storage net for placing items and clothes, though for the latter it may be best to use the coat hanger's place next to the window. You'll also find a personal litter bin, which is located just next to the standard 220 volt power socket for charging phones, tablets and laptops. On the airline seats, you'll find reading lights just overhead by the coat hangers, which at the table seats is substituted for a lamp. The table sections can also be extended and folded away depending on your needs. Now one common problem with the Euro duplex, and double decker trains in general, is the lack of overhead luggage space, but not to worry. The Alborak has plenty of larger luggage racks throughout, and I found there to be more than the standard duplexes you see in France and Spain. Finally, there's a drawdown blind to either reduce or block out the harsh sunlight, though it seems Morocco isn't usually overcast today. Overall, the Alborak has a solid interior design. The duplexes are amongst my favourite high speed trains, and it's great to see many of their characteristics maintained and enhanced. The high speed line to Kinitra follows both the Atlantic Ocean, located on the west coast of Morocco, which can just about be seen to the right, as well as the A5 motorway between Rabat and Tangier. After almost an hour of travel time, we cross the Cebu River and reach the end of the high speed line as we prepare to rejoin the classic line from Ujda and Fez to Casablanca and Marrakesh, where the weather becomes a lot less favourable. Shortly afterwards, we reach our first stop of Kinita, 
a port city responsible for being Morocco's shipping centre for agricultural produce, and contains a naval base which was shared with the United States during the Cold War. The rest of the journey to Casablanca is done on the lower speed conventional lines, shared with intercity and commuter trains, where the Al Burak speed has now halved to 160 km per hour at its highest. However, as part of the service's expansion to Marrakesh in the coming years, the route to Casablanca will soon gain its own high speed section, which will further slash journey times from Tangier to Casablanca to 1 hour and 30 minutes, with Tangier to Marrakesh taking as little as 3 hours. For those on the lower deck, you can see it's much busier than the upper one. It also contains the dedicated wheelchair spaces, though these appear to be used differently on this trip. As with the French TGV, there are also small areas in the vestibules for when the train is full or people need to take calls. Second class is in a 2x2 layout and features both airline and table seats. Unlike the French TGV, this makes up 5 of the 8 carriages on board. But as with the French TGV, the only real difference between the two is the larger seat in first. There is no complimentary food and drink service. However, if you do want something to eat or drink, you could normally purchase something from the cafe car, which makes up one carriage on board. Though, as I mentioned previously, it was the holy month of Ramadan when I travelled, during which no food or drink is served. The menu is reasonably priced, and I've linked it in the description below to see for yourselves. Around 20 minutes later, we're on the approach to Morocco's capital Rebet, where we can see the brand new Mohammed VI Tower located in the city of Sela, which was nearly complete and ready for opening at the time of recording. This will be the tallest building in Morocco and the third tallest on the African continent, once finished later in 2024. Our last stop before Casablanca is the Moroccan capital of Rabat, which was designated such under the period of French rule in the 20th century, with King Mohammed V choosing for it to remain as such following Morocco gaining independence in 1956. From Rabat Agdel, it's now non-stop to Casa Voyageur, where our journey ends. You'll find both standard and accessible toilets on board, with the accessible ones in both dedicated wheelchair sections on the lower deck, as I mentioned earlier. I found the toilets to be impeccably clean, with the standard ones being incredibly spacious too. Everything was in working order as well, so I was very impressed, especially when compared to the Isle Atlas trains. One downside of the current conventional line running is that the Al Borak can get caught up with local traffic, as seen here where we slow down past Mohamedia, awaiting the passing of an Al Atlas train, though this is a rather rare occurrence, with the Al Borak service boasting a punctuality rate of over 97%. That being said, I really enjoyed my time on the Al Borak. I did a return journey from Casablanca and both times did not fail to disappoint. The staff are brilliant, the Euro duplexes used are a step change to Morocco's other rolling stock and I'm very confident that Morocco's high speed rail investment will continue to benefit the country as it expands and continues to operate. Perhaps the best thing about this trip though was the price. My on the day ticket cost was 364 Moroccan dirhams for a fully flexible first class fare, which is approximately £28.11 for comparison. For over 2 hours in first class on a high speed train, this is exceptional value for money and I highly recommend having a ride on Africa's fastest train if you ever get the chance. As I mentioned before, the Al Borak is 97% punctual, but I just about managed to be in the 3% that isn't arriving into Casa Voyageur at a still acceptable two minutes late. Now you've heard from me, I want to hear from you. What did you think of the Al Borak service? Have you had a chance to travel on it yet? Or any other trains in Morocco for that matter? Let me know in the comments. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you did, please like and share it to aid the channel's growth and do consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more content such as this weekly. The arrival was well timed for me to go and break my fast so I'll leave the video here. 
Thanks so much for coming with me on this trip, and I look forward to bringing you with me on my next one.